So I had my first listening appointment. And I know for a fact that I learned a lot, but I want you guys to profit from my mistakes. So do me a huge favor and stick around to the end of this video. So on your first listing appointment or next listing appointment, you can have a better outcome than I did myself. Hey guys, welcome to my Kev Curry's Realty Channel. This is my Kev Curry and welcome to the channel. What's good family? This is Martez with eXp Realty. Coming at you guys every single week with the best tips, tricks, and strategy videos for real estate agents. And if you like content like this, please do me a huge favor. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, and also turn on the notification bell. But I wanted to go ahead and jump into the layout of the content so you guys can have a roadmap for how this video will go. First part of this video, I'm going to explain how I got this listing appointment. What did I do, where I got it from. Second part of this video, I'm gonna tell you the four things that I did wrong. Third part of this video, I'm gonna tell you the four things that I did right. And the fourth part of this video, which I want you to stick to the end so you can find out what actually happened, oh, is what actually happened. But um, with that being said, let's get into the video. All right, cool. So how did I get this lead? I actually got this lead through cold calling. Uh, reached out to her two days before Thanksgiving. And uh, she, she uh, the first time I called, I left a voicemail and then right when I finished my call session, because I call every day for an hour, no, for, I, I call 100 people a day, every day. But as soon as I finished my call session, she called me back <clears throat> and she was like, um, hey, I, 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 my next video, so make sure y'all subscribe to the channel because my next video, I'm gonna uh, reveal my cold calling script. And just to give you guys the title, I'll say this cold calling script landed me something i'm not gonna get into that because y'all found out at the end but cold calling spoke with her and uh she says she she gets a lot of calls she doesn't want to sell her property for nothing uh most people call her they cutting her in half and i know because i was a wholesaler before before becoming an agent so i know like i know the wholesalers are who calling and what they asking for the property and i just basically told her no I wouldn't be coming at your property that way. I'm actually an agent. I want to put it on the market and see if what we can get the top dollar for you. And uh, I told her that um, I'll run some numbers. What's her email address? Because every time I get on the call with somebody, the first thing, well, the main thing that I want to get from every person is their email. So got on the phone, got her email, uh, did the research, sent it back to her what I think on the property that she says she wants to sell first. I sent her and told her what I think it's worth. She liked that number and she was like, okay, okay. Um, she was a bit hesitant. And then that's when I jumped in, I took control of the conversation. And I actually was like, um, this is what I'm willing to do. I said, how about when I get back to town, because I was actually with my family in Georgia for Thanksgiving. I was like, when I get back to town, how about we meet up at the property, I walk it and let's just see what we can do. She's like, okay, cool. Just call me. Let me know when you get back in town. I'm like, cool. So I was talking to my girl. I'm like, baby, I think I think I just got my first listing appointment. She's like, okay, okay. But I didn't want to hype it up because, you know, I've been bailed on before. Got back home, called her again, and I well, actually texted her, text her and said, I'm actually back in town. Uh, when would be a good time for us to get together to discuss the next steps? And she was like, she called me and was like, you know what? I'm up here at one of my properties. You can actually come by and I'm actually, uh, she said some stuff is, I think she said a tree fell, a tree fell. And she was actually cleaning up one of her properties. She was like, you can come by and we can talk here on the porch. I'm like, okay, cool. So with that being said, I set up the scene. Let's go ahead and jump into um, the things that I did wrong. And I'm a, I'm gonna put my wrong things over here so y'all can see. But, um, and I'm also looking at my phone because I took notes. But um, mis the first mistake that I made, which is, I don't want, if you ever run into a person who has a rental portfolio, <clears throat> what I recommend you doing is running the numbers or just getting a general idea of what all of her properties are worth. So my number one mistake was I did not do any market research on the property that I was meeting her at. 
this was a major mistake because what if she wanted to sell the one that we were calling about and also the one that we were at and she happened to just ask me what 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 is this one worth boom i should be able to pull off the top of my head to make me seem more professional and more prepared is one down the street that sold for 80 recently and i know it's, it was in worse condition than your property so I, I feel like we can at least get 80. you see what i'm saying and you put yourself in a position where no matter what question she hits you with you got a response for her. so i don't know if i said this or not my number one mistake was i did zero market research on the property that i was meeting her at don't make that mistake but let's go ahead and get into mistake number two and this is one that i'm pretty sure a lot of you won't make but if there is somebody out there like me, you probably have did this before or will do this, but don't do it. Mistake number two, I did not know her name. I know, it's crazy. I'm quite certain that majority of you will not do this, but I did not know her name. So what I had to do was I actually had to um, go to public records look up the property that I was calling about, see whose name was listed as the owner of that property. And that's how I found out. But that's that's easy to avoid. Know the person's name before you go meet them. Mistake number three, <clears throat> I did not follow a script or have a plan for the conversation. I was really out there naked in a sense, where it's like, I, it was just a random conversation. Some of you may say this is nice, because it would set up a, a level of rapport. I think that you should have at least a couple of bullet points that you want to hit and a general idea of how you want the conversation to go. But I didn't, and that was my third mistake. Mistake number four, I did not, and because I didn't have a script, I did not control the conversation or I, I did not control the appointment. Uh, the time was not a sit, like a set point where I come to visit her. Um, uh, there also wasn't a set length, like we wasn't sitting at a table. Uh, it it kind of worked in my favor, which is why I'll get into the things that, that I did right. But this was, this is, is not, it was nowhere near a formal listing presentation at all. So I would say the fourth mistake that I made, which I'm going to repeat again, is I did not control the conversation. I did not control the appointment. I did not have complete control over everything. Okay, now the four things that I did right. So, the number one thing I did right. I made the appointment about her and not about me. As y'all know, this is my first listing appointment. I don't have any credentials at all and, and when it comes to, or any experience at all when it comes to being a real estate agent. I do have experience as a wholesaler but this is a completely different field in a sense. But I walked in and I made it about her. So I don't have much to talk about. I wanna hear what you have to talk about. And this helped me a lot. It really helped me a lot because she did all the talking and she blurted out a lot of stuff that I wasn't actually ready for, but I took notes on. The second thing that I did, which I great, what did I just did that I did great but I also mentioned before is I listened more than I talked I wasn't there running off about what all I have done what I feel like is worth nothing I didn't even come on on that at all I listened more than I talked um and this was I, I think this helped and built rapport with her because like I said one I made it about her and I listened more than I talked I really didn't say much at all and I got more than I came for. The number three thing, I actually told her that I was a, I would be there in about 20 to 30 minutes, and I actually got there within 20 to 30 minutes. So the number three thing that I did right was I arrived on time. And th like these are small things that anyone can do regardless of if you have done a million listings before, or if you've done zero, or if you lost five in a row, like you can do all of these things. And the number four thing that I did right was I, I listened to her when she was talking on the phone before I got there. She stated that she was getting like some stuff. <clears throat> she stated that some stuff was going on at one of her rental properties. So what I did was I dressed to help. I came and I 
sacrifice time in my schedule. I was ready to come help move stuff, do stuff around the house just so I can position myself as a person who wants to help and not just take. And uh, I actually came up, yeah, I was presentable, but I also was wearing clothes that I knew it was okay if I got dirty. So I actually came, let her know, hey, I'm, I'm here to help. Had my mask on and stuff, I'm ready, I'm ready to help. I'm here to help you, what can I do? She was like, nah, we don't really need you to do anything, but it's just the fact that you were willing to help. Like, wow, that really means a lot. So just to recap, the four things I did wrong. One, I did not know the market research on all of her properties or the one that I was going to meet her at. Two, I did not know her name. Easy to fix, know the person's name. Three, I didn't follow a script or plan. Four, is I didn't control the appointments. Make sure that you're in control of the appointment. It has to be the conversation with the appointment. Make sure that you have a specific time that you're gonna be there and that you all sit in an area where you can sign some paperwork. The four things I did right. I made it about her and not about me. Two, I listened more than I talked. Three, is I arrived on time. And four, I listened to what she said on the call before to position myself and build rapport. That rhymed and it works. All right, cool. So now that you guys know everything that I did wrong, everything that I did right in the setup, let me finish the story. So I actually arrived to the house that we were actually doing the appointment at. And I, uh, like I said, I didn't know her name. So I looked that up real quick. Once I looked that up, I knew her name, got out the car, went and sat on the porch. Like I said, I walked up and I was like, I'm willing to help. Her son was actually moving something out of the car. And I was like, um, I'm, I'm willing to help. I mean, what can I do? And he was like, nah, we good, we, uh, we good. She was like, oh, that's so nice of you. So I sat down, like I said, and I was actually ready to help. So I sat down and we talked about her property that she wants me to sell. And then she went to tell me why she wanted to sell and the reason why she wants me to sell. And the reason why she wants me to sell that property is because she wants to buy her mom's property. So in a sense, she was telling me, if you can sell my mom's property, you can sell my property, we're both happy. Yeah, she actually teared up because uh, her mom is 80 something years old. And um, it, it was really sad for me to sit there and be in that moment, but her mom is 80 something years old, has a rental property, and it's just been a strain on her. We had a hurricane come not so long ago, and uh, it did some damage to her property. And it just put her in a position where it, it really made her sad. She was like, I just wanna, uh, I wanna get my mom's house sold, honestly get her that money, uh, just so she can, you know, just ride off and not have to be stressed about anything. So I wanna get my mom 40,000 on this property. So if you can sell that one and sell this one, it'll make me happy. So that's two, I came for one, got two so far. But then she also said, I got this other property on uh, such and such street. And she was like, it's a duplex. I wanted to hold on to it, but I just find myself in a pinch right now financially. And um, if we can sell that one as well, then I'll be able to take care of some problems that I got myself. So that's three properties. And then she was like, I also got a studio, a one bedroom studio. So just a small house that I want to sell as well. But um, we're just gonna focus on those right now. So cr crazy enough, all of the stuff I did wrong, all the stuff I did right, it worked in my favor. I went there for one house and have four homes that she want me to sell. And this, I built enough rapport that she was like, I really want you to sell these four properties. So <clears throat> I told her what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go drive these properties, go see what they look like, see what the neighborhood's like, run the numbers, and I'll get back with you on a, uh, via email on what's the value of these properties. She was like, okay, cool, that sounds great. So I actually drove around. I was like, man, listen, we can make this happen. I can actually sell your mom's property, get her what she wants and the condition that it's in because of the area. I can get you this amount for this property, this amount for this property. She's like, great. I don't wanna sell them all at once, because of the tax bill, but I want to sell them off slowly all next year. Cool. So, moral of the story. So I had my first listing appointment and I walked away with four for next year. That is crazy within itself. And not even to say 
that I won't get uh, referrals from her. Not to say that her children probably want to buy properties or something like that. So it's just a never ending flow of possibilities. And all it came from was just cold calling one person for one property and I walked away with four. But I want to thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. Do me a huge favor. Click right here to subscribe. And I'm going to try something different. Click right here for our next video.